So I have four degrees from four of the best universities in the world in London and I thought I'll share my story because actually the path of me getting to the point where I got my PhD and I got my PGC wasn't always straight. It wasn't a path that I always knew I was going to go down. I didn't know I wanted to do a PhD until I actually got to the stage where I applied for one and I thought that maybe if you were someone who was watching this and you're at a similar position that I was at where I didn't quite know exactly what I wanted to do next maybe this would be useful for you to know sort of how I justified how I rationalized and how I thought about what I wanted to do next in terms of my academic and career okay so let's go all the way back so I thought I'd show you and bring up this book that no one outside of my family has seen this is actually called Amina's future book and this is a book that I started back in secondary school so when I started high school at the age of 11 years old I began this book and this is a book that essentially says what do I want to be when I grow up <laughs> um, and of course when I was that young everything to do with education and learning was highly driven by my parents my parents were very much on top of everything when it came to education, making sure that they knew what I was doing at school and making sure that they knew what I, what homework I had to do and supporting me as best as they could uh, outside of the classroom and outside of school as well. So of course, the internal motivation and the external drive 100% came from them in the beginning. So this is a report from school in year seven and I kept it and it has sort of what I was getting up to and kind of what I was doing in school and what I, that was, I was a generally good kid. Um, I had loads of friends, I was quite social, so I wasn't very quiet, but also I just got my work done at the same time. So it, this is nice to kind of keep. But in this book, it says like what I want to do. And if you look at the bottom, it actually says, it's all tattered up by the way, <laughs> very damaged. It says a doctor. At the time, the only doctor I knew that existed was a doctor that I went to see at the GP when I was sick, right? When I got a cold, when I had an infection, that was a doctor that I had seen and that was what I wanted to become. I wanted to become a doctor. And if you look at the book, it says, why do I want to become a doctor? So I was rationalizing everything, even from such a young age. And of course, my parents encouraged it. So I said, I wanted to become a doctor because I love science. It's my best subject at school. I used to do so well at it. I'm also really interested in the parts of the body, and I also get really high grades and I have some examination papers here that I've like, <laughs> I, have to sh I have to like zoom into this. Um, but I have some papers here where I've shown you like what marks I was getting in my exams in year seven. I was getting like 80, 90%. And that really solidified to me why I wanted to become a doctor. So that was the path that I always was going down, right? So I went to, I did really well at secondary school, my GCSEs, and then A-levels, I got four A-levels, um, three A's and a B. So I did really well at school, and when I was applying for university, and I came to think, okay, now I'm applying for medicine, right? So there were other students in my school that were also applying for medicine. When it came to it, I actually realized that I wasn't interested in medicine itself. Whilst I liked the idea of being a doctor, and I really enjoyed the subject itself and the content, the reality of being a doctor in the UK working in the NHS is one that I didn't really want to put myself through and I'm you know I have no regrets at this point especially in the state that it is now so I didn't apply for it in the end and I kind of just left it I didn't even do any exams I didn't do the UK CAT I just stopped at the point where I actually started to discover what um you know what what medicine was actually about in this country so i ended up applying for biochemistry and the reason why is because like i said i really enjoyed the subject i had no issue with the subject i really enjoyed learning about the human body and sort of what makes the body tick i had a little look around and i was looking at what subjects were similar to medicine in terms of content and i thought about biology just pure biology i thought about biochemistry i was this close to applying for optometry so i would have been an optometrist by the way i looked at pharmacy but then you know i really looked a lot deeper than just the content i looked at what the job would be like i looked at where you'd work i looked at the current state of like optometrists or pharmacies um i looked at like the pay and i just didn't feel like any of them really made me excited about the prospects after graduating not just what you're learning or like the name of it so in the end i applied to biochemistry and i was like you know what this gives me an open door this allows me to apply for other things afterwards it allows me to do a graduate medicine if i really am that desperate later on i can still go and apply because i'm still within the realm of of science 
Um, and so I just ended up applying for biochemistry for all five of my choices and I got into King's, of course, I got into all five choices, I got into King's and I decided to stay in London. Um, so I applied to some outside London and some inside London and I decided to stay inside London and I also decided to move out. So I was really not that far away from King's, probably a half an hour journey if that, but I thought, let me get the full amazing experience that you get when you live in halls. And back then it wasn't that expensive relative to what it is now. So I ended up moving out and living there for a year in halls and then the next two years with the friends that I made in the halls, not too far away from the university, about five minute walk in Elephant and Castle. So did biochemistry, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the fact that I could delve and kind of tap into a number of different subjects within biochemistry. So you're able to choose modules in the second and third year. So I chose modules like neuroscience, which I absolutely loved. I chose um, like cell biology subjects, I chose a research project, and these all kind of set me up for what I ended up deciding to do next. So when I graduated, again, I kind of toyed with the idea, I was like, do, are you 100% sure that you don't want to do medicine? Um, is, don't, you know, no regrets in the future. And I thought about it and a few of my friends ended up applying for medicine as the grad med school and they got into it. And you know, I was like, you know what, maybe I should, maybe I should just apply. And again, I just thought, this isn't what you want to do. It's, it was more the internal uh, internal and external pressure. It was what I had always written that I wanted to do. It was what my parents you know, really wanted me to do, but that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. So I ended up not applying for that, but then I hadn't quite finished with my education. I wasn't ready to go and find a job because I didn't feel like I had finished learning what I wanted to learn. So I ended up applying for a master's at Imperial College London, and that was in biomedical research more generally. So this course was really amazing. I believe it's still around now where they allow you to do, it's an MRes, so a master's in research. So you're allowed to do two six month projects. It's a 12 month course. So you start in September and you go all the way until August. Two six month projects and you focus on that. There's no taught content. You're not in lectures. You're not learning about any other information apart from doing research within that lab, just like a PhD student. So I was in two different labs. One was a neuroscience lab and one was a was like a traumatic, like a brain injury TBI lab. And the other one was like cancer research. And I really enjoyed both of them. Honestly, if I could decide on doing a PhD, I would have done it in both of the labs at the same time. And I did ask them if they had any funding, but neither of them had funding. One did try to apply for some funding for me because he really wanted me to stay, but he just couldn't get any funding for me at the time, which is really unfortunate. Um, but during that time, I realized that I really want to do a PhD. I, I love the idea of just delving into a subject, a subject area within science. And if you had asked me to do a PhD, back when I was 18, I would probably would have said no because I didn't really know what it was about and it probably would have seen, seemed a lot more daunting than what it was. But spending six months in those labs meant that I was able to see directly firsthand what the life of a PhD student looked like for six straight months. I was able to see the ups, the downs, the weekends, the long hours, the short days, the flexible timings. And I could really see what it looked like and I and I like that. I think I work really well by myself when I'm allowed to set my own timings. I'm very productive, I can be very organized, very disciplined. So for me that this, you know, that works really well to be a PhD student. So I ended up applying for PhD programs. I applied to at least 30, honestly. I applied to so many um, from universities, from institutes like Cancer Research um, Institute. I applied to so many different ones. I applied to like three-year programs, four-year programs, fully funded. Like I applied to so many and I ended up getting one um, at UCL that I ended up doing. And I found that one on findaphd.com. I love the project, I love the idea of it. I love the location, I love the university and everything about it was just, yep, yeah, 100% good option. Let's go for it. So I started my PhD. <laughs> and like I said, I, you never have thought I would have done a PhD if you had looked at what the things I was interested in doing when I was a lot younger. Um, but by really sitting down with myself at every stage of the academic journey and asking myself, what do you actually want to do? Are you going to regret any choices that you've made? Are you sure? And just really reflecting and not just kind of going with the wind or doing what other people were doing. Because trust me, there's so much pressure to do what everyone else is doing. Just do what suits you, do what's right for you. There are so many medics that have since graduated and left medicine because of the condition. So, I could have been that person, I could have spent six years in medicine and then not enjoyed it. So remember that 
if you don't feel like it's right for you, don't do it. If you feel like it's right for you and you think you'll actually enjoy it, because at the end of the day, it's you in that job. It's not you with your friends, it's just you. So you have to make sure that you enjoy what you do and you have to make sure that you're truly passionate enough that regardless of what the economy, government, politics, regardless of what's going on, it, you're still passionate enough that you will put up with it and you'll stay. So yeah, I ended up starting my PhD and it was a three year program funded for three, four years and also funded for another six months to write your thesis. So I started that at, I was aged 22 because I had, had taken no breaks in between. Started at 22, it's a three year program, finished at 25, um, spent another like six months, four, not even six months to be honest, like four months writing and submitted my thesis by the August. So I was all done and um, at that stage again, I, I felt like right now, what am I doing? Loads, loads of my friends from my PhD program ended up going into like consulting, management consulting um, or like patent law or some of them stayed as postdocs, a, a huge range of different things. And again, I looked into every single one of them. I was tempted, I was tempted to go with the management consultancy because they were earning so much money and they were their lives looked so great financially and traveling and everything but I thought that's not really my style I want to be close to family I don't want to be too far away I don't want to have to work in those kind of conditions where I'm like literally selling myself to this job um, I looked at patent law you required I spoke to someone that was a lawyer a patent lawyer and he was like look it's it requires dedication you need to spend another you know five six years training traveling this and that and I was like that's not what I want to do I'm 26 I, I literally just want to like start a career where I am and just that's it like finish studying I don't want to spend another six years or five years kind of retraining all over again so I left that and then I ended up finding this scheme called researchers in schools and it was a scheme that put research PhD graduates into secondary schools to teach and it was lovely because it gave you a balance it was like three days in school and the other days were spent doing your own research so you were fully paid for five days but actually you only taught for three days and then the other days you could spend on your own research. And you also give an affiliation to King's College London. So I was also part of King's College London as a research associate. So I had that balance where I was like one toe in academia, the other toe in teaching. And I just had this nice balance. And I also had my YouTube channel and I feel like this was something that I was really passionate about. And I was able to be creative and share my knowledge and like, you know, do so much on this, on this platform that if I went into something like management consultancy, I truly would not have the time, energy or capability to do anything aside from that. Um, so I just didn't want to have to be so limited in that sense. So I thought that that was a good option for me because as a teacher, you finish at three o'clock and I actually made sure I left at three o'clock because I got everything done during the day as much as possible. And so I had a few hours in the evening to do some other things like filming. I used to film my videos in the evening, um, well, not even in the afternoon um, when I came home from work. And it just was like a good balance, I feel like, for me. And that was how I ended up where I am now. So I guess that that's this is to say that what you've always dreamt to do from, you know, literally when I was 11 years old to what I actually ended up applying for at 18 years old was completely different. And that was because, you know, you can be passionate about something and let that drive you, let that push you. But when you get to that stage, don't blindly follow that passion consider it again say to yourself is this actually what I'm interested in think about what the future holds in that role think about what pay it is think about what conditions it is think about whether that lifestyle suits you and um, think about look at other people when I was thinking about patent law I spoke to someone when I was thinking about consultancy I spoke to someone when I was thinking about medicine I spoke to someone like I always spoke to someone along the road so I could get a true representative opinion on it and even when I was applying for a PhD, there was actually a postdoc and he said to me, don't, don't apply for a PhD and he put me off it. But because I really wanted to do it, I, I, I did it anyway. But I knew, I knew post, you know, academia is not well paid. I knew the hours are not great. I knew like the conditions, but I was still so passionate about it. So it's really important. Know the pros, know the cons, weigh it up and figure out whether you're passionate enough to apply for it and actually, actually, you know, push through it when it gets really difficult. A PhD can be, really tough and especially if you're not in a group where you've got a, su a supervisor that's supportive or, group, or you know people around you that's supportive it can be really lonely and really difficult so you know again if you don't have that sort of internal passion you'll, you'll struggle a bit more so that's why it's so important to keep questioning yourself 
why, why do I want this? Am I sure? Why, why, why? And just keep on pivoting to get to where your final destination is. But yeah, I hope that this was an interesting story. It's quite a quick run through of my academic journey and how I got from 18 to 26, basically, with four degrees. And um, yeah, I hope that you found this helpful and I hope that it, was, it maybe gave some advice to someone who is in, in a similar position that I was in at the time. Let me know your academic story and whether it was linear or whether you always knew what you wanted to do and that's where you are now or if you're doing something completely different to what 18 year old you uh, wanted to do. Anyway, if you enjoy this, then do give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to follow my channel and see you in my next one. Bye.